This is Betsina, C7, best cohort ever, as they said back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose every cohort says that. <laughs> Yeah, they try, right? But uh, you know, it's, I've actually been pretty C7 heavy uh, this uh, fall with um, some of the guest speakers. So oh, an awesome cool. group. You're setting them up for, uh, you know, the bar has been set. So uh, we'll have to see where things go. But yeah, yeah for the purpose of the video, what I'm going to do for everyone who's now settled into the call, um, and I'm going to let in one more person here is do a quick little intro. So for everyone who is now joining us, uh, welcome again to another guest speaker, alumni speaker from MDM C7 days, which seems like crazy long ago right now, because um, this is a C15 group that we're addressing. Uh, mm -hmm. As you know from my emails to everyone, uh, Betsina has a very unique background, both coming into the program as well as her experience post MDM. She is currently at Apple, uh, but working from home in Burnaby. So uh, there's um, another remote worker like most of us, you know, she's embraced this and is uh, doing what she, she can to get through her day days like the rest of us. Um, I am super grateful for the time. I think she's had an amazing journey and a great story to tell. I'm gonna pass the invisible mic over to Betsina so she can walk us through her deck and we'll have some Q and A, uh, opportunities to chat a little bit at the end of this. Um, for now, I provide you with my virtual applause and my real applause, Betsina. Thank you for joining us. Uh, over to you. Thanks so much, Dennis. And uh, yeah, thank you for, you know, to everyone for, for taking the time for being here. I know these are crazy times right now and, and uh, it's crazy that we have to meet, you know, virtually right now. I wish I could see everybody's faces and everybody like in the same room, but unfortunately, you know, these are different times. And so, um, yeah, the, this is just mostly a, a, a talk about sort of my journey and sort of uh, just, you know, maybe, you know, you'll see how, uh, you know, the, the CDM had like a huge impact on me uh, really in my career. Um, and so hopefully you, you'll enjoy this. Um, so let's get here. So uh, Again, I'm just going to go about a little bit, I'm going to give a little bit of introduction about myself and then I'll go through sort of like the journey and sort of like, I guess like the, the biggest challenges I've had before the CDM, during the CDM and then after the CDM. And then uh, I'll give you some takeaways just based on my experience, things that really have uh, made me a better person and better, better designer. And then hopefully, as Dennis said, we'll, we'll have some time for a Q&A. So I'm Betsina. I was born in Mexico. I studied there a uh, visual uh, bachelor's in visual media arts, and then I moved to Canada in 2012 to study the master's degree here at the CDM. And uh, it was really amazing experience. I fell in love with Canada. I think I'm going to stay here for a while. <laughs> uh, although most recently, I, I spent uh, about a year and a half um, traveling and working remotely in Europe. And honestly, it was a life-changing experience. If you had the opportunity to travel and work remotely or you know, live the, the trendy digital nomad lifestyle, as they say, I really recommend it. It's, um, it's a great way to learn what's happening around the world, you know, and not, not just culturally and you know, politically, but in terms of technology, it, it's just so, so different. I learned a lot of things in Europe and, and I think it really, it really had a positive impact. So I definitely recommend you to do it once in your lifetime for sure. And again, a year goes by really fast. I only spend about a year and a half and I, I think about it and it's, it doesn't seem like a long time. I wish I could go back really. So I currently work as a product designer at Apple and uh, this is a visualization of my journey so far. <laughs> and I really wanted to show you something like these because it's, uh, you know, it, it looks maybe a little bit messy. And for some of you, maybe it would end up looking more linear, more clear. For others, it might be looking with even more branches. You know, really, it really, everybody will have a very different path. And I had a lot of opportunities, I think, you know, in my life that sort of led me to this point, to today. And I just kind of want to go briefly uh, to some of those kind of key moments for me that were like the biggest learning experiences. And so, as you can see here, the, the yellow pills are basically the, the projects that I think um, they had a, a, a really good, uh, like where I learned the most, I said, that had the best impact in my skill set and in my journey. 
and then the little green um, rectangles are the the experiences I had in school. So the first one you see is where I did my bachelor's. Then you have the CDM, and then later I had the opportunity to go back to school, and I did a, a, a programming animation mentor. And then the white blocks is basically everywhere I work professionally. So just everywhere I earn some money uh, from it. And so I actually started uh, working in an art gallery. That was my very first job, which is very different. What I had to do, I was just literally answering the phones and answering emails, uh, very different from what I do today. And so I'm just gonna go over in more detail about sort of my journey uh, before the CDM. So, Originally, I wanted to study animation. That was like my dream. And I came to Canada because I have a family in Canada. And so I came to visit. And then I learned that Emily Carr had this really cool uh, bachelor's degree in animation. So after finishing high school, I took a year off. And then um, I applied to Emily Carr. And I, I wasn't accepted. And I remember that was like really disappointing for me. I didn't even think about the possibility of not being accepted. Um, and I was looking for courses near home in Mexico that had animation and I couldn't really find anything close to home. And so I discovered this school that had a bachelor's in visual media arts and I went into it and I discovered that I loved it. It was my very first, um, you know, entrance to interactive media and digital media and sort of really experimenting with art and technology and, and just see what happens with that. And so um, when I finished the, the bachelor's, I was really into art installation and, and kind of like sound art and things like that. And then I, I discovered the CDM. I wanted to do a master's degree and sort of pursue this uh, interactivity further. And I really loved what the CDM had to offer and definitely loved the experience for sure. And uh, yeah, I just, I remember when I looked at the CEM originally, uh, I thought, oh my God, I can work in all these amazing companies with these amazing people. And it's just gonna be so crazy and so interactive and collaborative. And I honestly wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, and it was, um, it was definitely more, a lot more than I expected in terms of like positive, positive things. So when I uh, came to the CDM, um, I had a lot of imposter syndrome. Now, I don't know if you guys uh, will have that, so maybe some of you will. And, and this is basically feeling that maybe you're not worthy of being here. Maybe you're not good enough. And I, I honestly remember when we all had to do our pitch coaches, if you had to do yours, everybody introduced themselves, all my peers. And I thought, wow, like these people are amazing. They're super talented. And I, I was kind of struggling a little bit to feeling that I was part of that. And honestly, I, I've had this feeling not only at the CDM, but also in different times of my, in my career. And I've, en I've ended up learning that everybody has a very unique path. You know, everybody has different skill sets. And if you're there, it's for a reason, right? And, and nobody is perfect. You will be there to continue improving improving your skill set and continue learning and, that, and that's the most important thing. So if you're suffering from imposter syndrome right now, you're not alone and you're meant to be here, you know, really. Um, something that was really cool here was um, learning to collaborate. Um, I, when I was in the bachelor's, they basically sort of taught us to be more individualistic, you know, they were more like, it's your idea and your concepts, you know, and, and you work on it completely. and when I came to the CDM, I, I had to learn to detach from those ideas and, and see them evolve completely. Um, because the only way they're going to become amazing ideas is by having other people's input. And that's something that I, I, I really learned at the CDM. And honestly, that's exactly how it is in, in, in professional life as well. Uh, when you work in a company, it's all collaboration and, and the ideas change a lot. So. Um, take advantage of learning that here a lot and work with as much as possible, with as many people as possible. Uh, learn from your peers. Um, this is really cool because um, you'll find that, I mean, there's people from different countries, there's people from, from different disciplines, and uh, it was, it's, I think it's a very unique experience that honestly I haven't been able to find anywhere else. Um, you know, I, I learn a lot from different parts of the world and, and different things. I remember 
in, in our cohort, we used to do these workshops uh, in the weekends for each other uh, to teach us something that we didn't know. Like, for example, one of my best friends, she did um, a class in After Effects. And that was the very first class I took in After Effects. And I loved it. And honestly, I use After Effects almost on a daily basis at work. Um, it's my second favorite tool in the world. Um, and it just always fascinates me to think that something so simple, you know, that a friend of the city and did on a Sunday night, you know, a workshop for us. Um, I should probably thank her, actually. Um, you know, I, I learned a lot and, and, you know, ask your peers if you if you want to know, you know, how to code or something like that. Just tell them, hey, can you teach me a little bit? Uh, maybe I'll exchange something, you know, I'll, I'll teach you how to draw or I'll teach you about business. You know, like definitely uh, take advantage of those exchanges because you won't have a lot of time, I think, once once you're in like in the work life. Um, I love the diverse work. Uh, I think, you know, in the term, in the first term, I, I work on, on, on a music related project for a for a radio station. And then in term two, I work in a game. Um, and then in term three, uh, well, in term two, I also did an art installation project. And then in term three, I did a venture internship. And for those who are not familiar with the term, it's, it just basically means to have an internship at the school and you'll try to make your own startup. And honestly, all those projects were very different from each other. Um, sometimes I wasn't sure, you know, why I was there. Like I was sort of discovering what I liked, you know, like I didn't know I liked to work on games until I work on one and, and definitely take advantage of of that diversity of projects that you, you will have um, an opportunity to work on. <clears throat> Sorry, and- um, Actually, I wanna um, jump in here and give you a, a moment to have a drink here, but I'm remembering that game project. It's kind of unique, because um, was that the Roadhouse First Nations Technology Council collaboration? That was a really cool project. Yeah. But it's yeah. also, it's interesting too, because you had a whole team of international students working on a Canadian indigenous property and IP, I think. Mm -hmm. you had, First Nations Technology Council was involved in some ways. So you had to be culturally sensitive to working with those art assets and with the First Nations peoples. I mean, that was, yeah, that was, I remember CTV even did a story on you guys for that. Oh yeah, yeah, we're in the news. <laughs> yeah, it was actually really crazy because um, as you said, like nobody was from Canada, from the team and we had to learn uh, how to write correctly and, and talk about First Nations um, and, and like how to, you know, utilize their art without making like a stereotype and, and really understanding their, um, their background and their history. So it was like a very, very interesting collaboration. I think I learned a lot from, uh, you know, about British Columbia here and that, yeah. in that project. So it was, it was really awesome. I think that was definitely one of the most memorable projects that I, I remember. And then, cool. uh, yeah. So in the term three, uh, sorry. Yeah. In the last term in the internship, that was, um, I would say that was also like a really interesting project for me because, uh, I went on, on a, on a startup idea with a few of my friends and at the end it didn't work out, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was a failure in a way, uh, you know, it was a bit unsuccessful. We couldn't find market, uh, a market to buy it, but I like to think that, you know, the failing it's, it was super successful in the sense of all of us learn to take a risk. You know, we saw most of our peers taking internships in companies and potentially getting full-time jobs from there. And we were like wondering like, Hmm, are we doing the right thing? Like we're, you know, should we just maybe go and look for uh, an internship at a company? But just the idea that we were so passionate about something and we wanted to see it grow and, and maybe it could become really successful, right? Like, and, and just, you know, risking everything and pursue like something like that. It was definitely a life changing experience. We had to go to, um, uh, just find clients. We enrolled in this incubator at UBC. Um, we, uh, we had a lot of interview, a lot of people. We pitched our deck to many companies. It was just like a whole journey. It was pretty awesome. So definitely if you had a chance to, 
to join a team that has an amazing, you know, story to tell and an amazing idea that could become amazing, <laughs> definitely try it out. Uh, and not just at the CDM, you know, even outside the CDM, I think, um, you know, everybody has ideas. If you had one, just find a group of people that could help it, help you build it and just get it out there. I think, um, uh, there's nothing, I think there's nothing more rewarding than working really on an idea that you feel really passionate that you created from, from start. Yeah, so, on that note, we had, yeah. we had Bonnie was a guest speaker the other week in that too. So the Orbitz, yeah. which was the main oh. property, Buo, uh, was, um, you are all doing very, very well in your careers. And I, so this is why I like to touch on the fact that doing a pitch project and then a venture internship, success or failure of the business, the learnings that entrepreneurial mindset, it's really aided a number of you in your careers. So I still, I, and again, I'm, I'm still a huge fan of that project and I believed in it, still do. Uh, I think it, it predated a bit of the Miro functionality and Slack for that matter. So mm -hmm. that, that project had a ton of potential and I'm still proud that you and your colleagues uh, pursued it. So well done. But um, anyway, <laughs> not a failure in my view, so. Yeah, no, no, that's true. I guess I meant it in terms of like. Yes, I, I know like what you mean, commercial we success. Go for it. Yeah. yeah, but you, you, it's funny you said that because I, I never saw myself as a, an entrepreneur at all, like as like a business person. Like I wouldn't even think I was good at it. And I think I just had to learn how to do it. And it, it helped with a lot of the confidence, you know, like even in interviews, like, oh, you know, you felt a bit more com uh, comfortable talking uh, and presenting, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was really awesome experience. Um, and then, yeah, so after the after the CDM. Oh, sorry. Actually, I do have some top tips. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. This is just based on my my experience, like what made the CDM experience uh, like amazing for me, uh, which was work on something you've never worked before. I think like putting yourself in a situation that is completely out of your comfort zone um, in a, in a, in like, an, a, a, for instance, like I, I wouldn't have never thought I would work in a game to be honest. And, and I loved it. Uh, same with a venture internship. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of that before. Like I didn't, I didn't came to the city and thinking that, uh, but definitely try something like that uh, at least once because it's, it's really, really life changing, putting yourself into into something that you've never done. Um, learn from your peers, as I said, you have a whole resource of knowledge around you. Uh, not just the faculty, not just the library, not just, you know, not just what you're learning, but your peers, you know, they're also learning with you and they know a bunch of things that you don't know and you can teach each other. That's, that's, that's amazing. Uh, definitely do this a lot. Um, reach out to faculty and network. I think, um, you know, I think everybody says that in schools, you know, oh, do it, take advantage of this. I mean, yes, but I, I truly believe that um, the faculty here, they're just like, they're just like peers as well. You know, that they're, they're really approachable. Everybody is. I mean, I was, uh, Jeanette was my mentor. I mean, she still is. I still see her as my mentor. I was used to go and buck her, like literally knocking at her door and just asking random questions, <laughs> you know, even like, oh, I don't know what I want to do with my life, you know, even questions like that. And, and she was always so super helpful. Everybody was super helpful. Um, definitely utilize that in the network for sure. Um, there's a huge network of people around. Don't be afraid to connect with people on LinkedIn, you know, who went to the CDM and just message them, you know, I mean, don't be a stranger in the sense of just connect randomly. Like, I, I always like when someone sends a message and like, hey, I'm joining the CDM and, you know, I would like to connect with you. And I really appreciate it because I wish I did it more, you know, and, and I think you're taking the right steps by reaching out early to people and just having them on, on your radar. And then fourth, attend the network events. I think honestly, for me, I, I didn't think I was like a very confident person when I joined. I couldn't even talk to, you know, get the phone and talk to the bank to change something. I, you know, I was really nervous to do those things, especially because English is not my first, uh, you know, language. And I was very conscious that I could probably make mistakes and things like that. And in the networks, in the network events, sometimes there were like CEOs and, you know, like very important people. And I always thought, 
oh gosh, this is so intimidating. And you might feel like that, but honestly, like it's okay. Like these network events, uh, they're super good for building confidence. <laughs> like honestly, even if you don't know what you're saying, <laughs> like just say whatever, you know, like I remember sometimes, um, you know, people would ask you, oh, so what do you do? Or what do you want to do? And I had no idea how to answer that question. And I used to sometimes change the answer, like in a different event, I would say something else and then try to see how it felt, <laughs> you know, how it feels. How do I feel like that with that answer? Um, it was like a really good discovery thing. Definitely, um, I'm not really sure how the network events would happen remotely, I'm guessing, over these events. But um, just utilize the chat, you know, just utilize the chat in Zoom, put a bunch of emojis, you know, people like emojis. Just try to, I think, that's actually something interesting if if you're doing uh what i've noticed for instance um in terms of like comparing collaboration or like networking uh, you know in person and and remotely even if it's like via slack or you know in a chat kind of like tool um communicate more than you would you know like you have to do a bit more because there's this barrier uh you know this virtual barrier that there's a camera there, there's a screen, you're kind of looking at many people at once or something, just communicate more than you would because you can have to break this barrier remotely for sure. Um, but yeah, so do that. And then uh, what do I have here? So yeah, so after the CDM, uh, it gets definitely more complicated. <laughs> um, I had an, an interesting experience at Roadhouse. Um, when when I graduated, um, someone at Roadhouse reached out to me and say, "Hey, we like the, the work you did in the game and the term and the second term of the CDM, and we're thinking if you could come in to um, to work with us for for a, about a month. Uh, it's just a contract work. Um, it's, it was a, it was some concept art for a game, and I thought, oh my god, yes! Like uh, I'm looking for a job. This could be kind of like my breakthrough, my breakthrough or something like that. You're finding a job." I thought maybe, you know, after the contract, there could be an opportunity to, to be hired full time. And long story short, um, I couldn't deliver the job. It was definitely above my skill set. And it was a crazy learning experience because they were super helpful. You know, they, I think like by the end, they sort of understood that mm, maybe like, maybe she won't be able to do this. And, and they put me actually with one of their lead concept artists to to just literally sit, sit next to him and just ask him questions, see how he does his work. And by the end of it, um, I ask um, my, my supervisor there, uh, Joe, I ask him, hey, I saw that you have a, a junior artist position here. Can I, do you think I should apply? Like, I, I would really love to, you know, I've learned a lot so far in this month and I think I would be good at it. And I remember he asked me, but Sina, what is it that you really want to do? You know, like I see your portfolio and you have all these different things. And I mean, it's great, but like, what do you really want to do? You know, and, and he said to me, I want to put you in a role where you will excel at it and where you will be great. And the only thing is that you'd be more amazing at it. And because that's good for us and that's good for you. So if you tell me what you're the best at, I can probably find something for you. And I, I didn't know how to answer the question. You know, I feel like I liked so many things and I never felt like a, an expert on one single thing. And uh, it was a little bit like embarrassing and enlighten, enlighten, enlightening at the same time, you know, because after that I was like, okay, well, thanks. <laughs> you know, like I'm going to think about that. <laughs> and so I went to, I went back to the CDM in my room and I started thinking, I need to, I need to really figure out where I want to go. And I started using a bunch of sticky notes in the in the wall and just write down my my skill sets, all my my the skills that I have, uh, kind of in order of like what the best one and to like the one that I don't have that much, but I would like. And then I put the the industries I wanted to do work at and and then I just sort of start mapping the skills. And and I realized that where I wanted to work is it was in a place where I could utilize most of my skills because I, I didn't want to give up everything. You know, I, I was looking for say UI designer positions, but then the, the feedback that I was getting was, Oh, you have a lot of like drawing. Maybe, maybe you can work at a studio. And then I was applying to studios and they were like, well, you have some UI design here. Maybe you would work in, in the UI design. And so 
I think like I was really struggling to appeal to companies, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, multidisciplinary is, is bad, actually it's really good, but definitely kind of, you have to kind of learn how to tell your story so that a company really wants to work with you. And so once I figured that out, um, I actually ended up having two job offers, um, one in e-learning and another one was for OutTV. Um, and, um, I ended up choosing the e-learning job because um, I just felt more comfortable with the whole skill set. I, I did a lot of, uh, you know, a little bit of video editing and sometimes I, I did cartoons for some of the e-learning videos. Sometimes there was some interactive design in it. It was a little bit of everything. And I thought it was like a great way to start my career. Actually, uh, yeah, that's where I'm in right now, in LSG and OutTV. So um, it was it was a really great experience for me. Um, I thought I was gonna stay there for two years, but I actually ended up staying there for about five years. Um, eventually, uh, that company that I was working for sort of uh, I had the opportunity to. My manager was starting a new company, and he sort of dragged me into it, and and I I just helped them build a company from scratch, you know, from the logo and all the product and so on, and. And it was, it was, it just sort of happened. I didn't really, I was actually maybe thinking about leaving the company, but it just happened. And, and, you know, like that sort of lead the opportunity for me to, to work to Europe, to work in Europe because they didn't have an office. And, and I said, Hey, you know, I, I want to go to Europe. Do you mind if I work remotely? And so they said, yeah, sure. You know, we know you, you've been with us for a while. We trust you. So that was actually pretty great. Um, I think like, at some point though, um, before going to Europe, I was definitely um, struggling to really find um, something more challenging for me. And uh, the, this animation, I, it's too, it's too, like studying animation started to, to come back to me. And, and I was thinking, you know what? I've never really tried it. A lot of people uh, have sort of tell me what it is to work as an animator and, and sort of in a way sort of you know, indirectly decided not to pursue that. But I thought, you know what, I want to try it out. I feel like I want to take a risk in my life right now. Um, so I went and enrolled into this animation mentor course. Um, and halfway in the program, I realized that that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> so, I mean, I wanted to try it out and it was awesome. But I thought, I think this is not the path. Um, so I was like, I, I just need like some sort of uh, another enlightening moment, you know, like I really was looking for a next challenge, but I didn't know what it was. And so that's when I told my job, I am going to go to Europe. Uh, you know, I, I just want to go and travel and see the world and see what happens. And um, that was pretty cool. Um, I honestly think, um, you know, I discovered a lot of things that I had no idea that were happening in technology. For example, in Europe, you know, uh, where I was traveling at least, everybody was talking about the GDPR, everybody was talking about privacy, about data, data protection, privacy by design, ethical design, um, fintech and digital banking are like way advanced in, in certain ways than they are in North America, for instance, cryptocurrency, all of those new things that I, I honestly had no idea, you know, here. Um, so I, I, I feel like in a way I discovered sort of what that I wanted to have like a, a new job where I could uh, fit a purpose when I did something more meaningful and what that led to is to when I came back to Vancouver uh, I wanted to look for a new job and last year I came back and instead of looking for job titles I was focusing on skill sets and the purpose of, of the what the companies were doing um, you know, so I was looking for a company that had great values, um, a company that, you know, focused on something meaningful. And, and I didn't really care too much about the title. I just wanted to make sure that the skill set was exactly what I wanted and the company was something that I wanted. And um, that was pretty cool. I ended up uh, finding a job, uh, a company called blockchain.com. It's in cryptocurrency. And uh, the job uh, was in London in the, in the UK and I was preparing to go there this year um, it, and everything you know was, everything was pointing to that we we're making arrangements to move to the UK um, eventually COVID happened um, 
So the job was still there, but it was a little bit uncertain. Um, I just didn't know when I was going to move to London. I was working on a contract basis, so there was no really, they couldn't really hire me here in Canada. And I was just, you know, the company was starting to make uh, changes because obviously, you know, it's a pandemic. We don't really know what's going to happen with the economy. Things are crashing, right? So, and being in, in finance, the company, they were worried about certain things. So, um, you know, at that time where I was thinking, okay, well, am I going to stay here? What am I going to do? Um, an Apple a recruiter reach out and it just seemed like, you know, let's just um, explore more about this opportunity. And, uh, you know, eventually they offered me a job and, and I mean, uh, it, within a week, uh, my partner and I decided to stay here in Canada. You know, we had all of our, all of our ideas that, okay, we're going to the UK, all of our furniture was temporary, you know, and, uh, and after taking, uh, you know, accepting an offer there at Apple, I felt it would be like a, a really good opportunity to, to let go. And, and so we changed our plans immediately and stay here. And I guess the reason I'm saying that is because, um, you know, sometimes life happens, you know, COVID happens and things change. And sometimes you might find changing your plans completely in a few days. But honestly, that's just how life is. And, and, and it's, it's literally like a roller coaster of decisions and, and, and opportunities that happen. Um, so I do have like some, uh, some small, I guess, like takeaways. Um, so be open to directions and opportunities that life presents. Honest, honestly, I feel like all the little opportunities, you know, all the little branches that you saw on the, the flow of sort of like my journey, uh, those are all opportunities that I had. You know, there were sometimes, some of them were really small. Some of them were, you know, bigger opportunities. Uh, but definitely try to just uh, look out for those. Sometimes there's an opportunity knocking at the door and we don't really see it. And then sometimes we think, oh, this is just such a simple project or, uh, you know, whatever. But I, I found that, you know, the smaller door, doors, like sometimes open to huge worlds, really. Like, um, you just never know what amazing things could happen later down the road. Um, be okay with uncertainty. I mean, I think right now we're all learning to be okay with it, uh, with the pandemic. You know, I think uh, these are very uncertain times, very, um, you know, stressful times. Uh, and that's okay. You know, everybody basically is living this. And I think in a way by living these, you're sort of preparing and accepting that uncertainty for other things in the future. Because in reality, you just never know what's going to happen. You know, you can sort of plan your career, maybe an ideal job, but you never know if you're really gonna get there, you know, or maybe you're gonna get there in a different way that you're thinking. And to be honest, things are changing so quickly in the industry that you might end up having a job that doesn't exist right now, you know, and, and you might love it. You might find out that you love it. So uh, yeah, be okay with changes. See everything as an experience. Um, I think this is really important for me because uh, life experience is as equally important as you know job experience. Uh, you know, like for instance, when I was traveling in Europe and just meeting a lot of different people, um, just made me feel more comfortable, more more uh, comfortable about hearing different uh, perspectives and learning about other cultures, learning about other ideas, and that at work, you know, if you apply that at work you're just going to be more open to discuss ideas and just make better ideas. Try to surround yourself with people from uh, different backgrounds and, and even ideas that you don't agree with. You know, I think sometimes nowadays with everything that's customized for us, like social media and internet and everything, sometimes we get the same stuff, you know, we get the same stuff all the time. We, you know, it's easy for us to choose friends that think the same, but the conversations that you have with those friends is, is just the same conversations. You know, what about a conversation with a friend that doesn't think the same, you know, that have that has different political views or, or that think completely different about an idea. Those, what I found is that those have been the most richest experiences for me to learn a different perspective and to be open and accept different people. And I think it's very important, uh, especially nowadays, 
to be surrounded of all kinds of different people. Um, so definitely do that a lot. Um, and then know what you know and what you don't know. I think, um, I mean, this might sound funny, but sometimes it's hard to know what we don't know, you know, or sometimes it's hard to know that we know something. We think that we don't know it enough or, or we don't feel confident about that skill or something like that. But if, you, if you're just assertive and honest with yourself, um, then you know what you need to work on. You know, you, you can go and, oh my God, that's a super cute dog. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> um, right, so yeah, know what you know and what you don't know. Um, I think this really helped me looking when I was interviewing at jobs. For, for example, sometimes I was thinking, oh, I really would like to do this, but I don't know how to do all this and this and that. Okay, well, at least you have a plan now, you know, you know what you need to do. Um, so, so be assertive and be confident about the things that you know. And then lastly, find purpose and meaning in your work. I think this one is especially important for me because I think, uh, you know, throughout my life, I think I was always excited about the new things, you know, all oh, this new technology came out. I want to play with it. Um, oh, virtual reality came out. I want to play with it and do something and experiment. And that's great. And honestly, technology is always cutting edge, you know, but Think about the ethical consequences about technology. I think through the years, um, a lot of companies and a lot of people haven't really thought out through what ethical consequences can happen. And you know, you you see it now with with data protection, right? There's a lot of data collection, um, and and now a lot of people are starting to think, hey, wait a second, uh, you know, I have my right for privacy. Um, I don't want to share certain things, and you see companies making changes to their you know, legal documents to, to okay, we're not gonna take these from you, et cetera, right? Um, you know, there are, uh, you know, for instance, if, if you wanna work in AI, that's amazing, that's great. But, you know, also investigate what, what things are happening with AI that need fixing. You know, I think um, there's, there's so many roles out there in design and developer, for developers, and there's so many things you can find, but ask really yourself what kind of role model you want to be. You know, not, not just think about the role you want to have, but what kind of role model you want to be. I think this is really important because if you really find meaning, meaning like purpose in your work, um, I think you're gonna find that you're happy because you're making a change, you know, a positive change in the world. So definitely look for something like that. And, um, I do have here um, a quote that I really like. Uh, Failure is the best way to figure out where you're going. I honestly think, you know, when I think back, say, you know, I wasn't accepted at Emily Carr, but the venture really, the venture internship didn't really take off. Um, I, you know, I stopped my animation mentor classes. Um, you know, COVID happened and I didn't travel to the UK. I stayed here, but then I, I got a job that I really like. So, if all those things didn't happen, you know, really, my life would, would have been completely different. And those are the main things I remember as the biggest learning experiences. Uh, so, you know, it's okay to fail and sometimes feel like, you know, sad if something doesn't work out. But honestly, uh, even here at the CDM, like, is the perfect place to fail. You know, nobody's going to fire you or like, you know, nobody's going to be mad at you. I think on the opposite side, I think whenever we fail at something, everybody's like, yes, you know, you tried it, you know? So I think that's the most important thing. Um, and, and definitely, I think companies see that when you, when you tell them about a project or, or somewhere you were trying to do something and it didn't work out, and you tell them why it didn't work out, the fact that you know why it didn't work out and that you know, you know, what would you do different? those are the things that are going to make you a candidate for somewhere you know they're not gonna you know there's so many people that are so good at so many things you know you can find amazing designers everywhere around the world like super fast good developers and everything but you need to know why things don't work you need to, in, in order to know why things don't work you have to try them and then they have to stop working for you you know you have to make a mistake and then learn why it didn't work so yeah, definitely uh, just fail as much as possible. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of weird, but yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess that's it. 
I mean, well, I, yeah, is, that's a, I mean, a, a great way to, to, to kind of get to the Q&A. So yes, thanks for that. And you're right. I mean, the, the failure stories, that's, that, that is the one that is an, an often used interview question about tell us a time you were, you know, working on something that didn't work out yeah. and what did you do and what would you do differently? So, and the things you learn from it. So I think, anyway, I, I, I just, those are great takeaways. I think a lot of people come into this program and you've touched on a number of things that maybe not everyone talks about, like the imposter syndrome is a very common thing. It's like, it, you know, I don't think, you know, anyone can, there's a lot of people that have that and they just don't, don't put a, a label, a name, or even know what it really is. But it's, I'm, I'm glad you, you brought that up because it is a very common um, experience feeling that people have. And then the mm -hmm. unknowns on your career path and the journey, right? And being open to the kind of opportunities that come up and being prepared to, to fail and learn the things that you think you thought you wanted, but you didn't like the animation path, right? So mm -hmm. now you're working at Apple as a product, you know, like this is, uh, this is amazing. So it's kind of, um, you get there. I had, a, I, had a, I had another call with an alumni member this morning that she had left BC, was working in Montreal and did some really cool things out that way. And then she's now in Alberta and it's just like, when you're willing to kind of go with the flow, uh, you know, it's what, is that experience can be in Europe or it can be in Canada or other places. I think, yeah. being, yeah. you know, and, but I agree with you. I, I, I moved to, to Denmark and to Germany and I didn't, I'd never intended on it, but I was there for about the same about a year and a half, two years. And it still feels like a, such an instrumental part of my, my history of my career. But um, mm -hmm. there was some questions that came up in the text during your talk. And one of them was, you'd mentioned your second favorite software, um, but what was your first? Oh, my first one nowadays is Figma. Figma, <laughs> if okay. If you guys have used Figma, everybody who's going into UX, UI design, or uh, they're interested in that, potentially. You just got a big yes from Mary, it looks like. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Figma, it's amazing. I mean, obviously, there's tons of amazing tools, and who knows for how long. Again, who knows how long Figma will be around. You know, Sketch was the, the king of UX and UI design for a long time, and Figma just crushed it. So, yeah, who knows? But that, that's, my, that's my favorite. <laughs> cool. Uh, and then let me see. I think there was a few others that just came up. Um, apologies for my dog. He really wanted up. I, I, this is oh, around so his cute. dinner time, and he's like, what's up? <laughs> that's Chip. Has, yeah. yeah. Um, oh. But uh, did you ever think you were going to move into the fintech space, the finance, uh, blockchain, financial avenue? No. Like, or is that just part of your openness to doing things that you didn't you know what it's funny because I my like my brother is in finance and I always was like why is he always talking about money and uh, you know <laughs> but like I feel like um when I was traveling I struggled with money not because I didn't have money but like because of transferring money from Canada to here and then sometimes I'm sending money to Mexico and so it's a mess. I mean, honestly, it's really hard to move money around, like even for yourself, like it's so expensive to leave in another country with a, with a, you know, bank from somewhere else. Cause you're always paying all these extra things. And so I just started to searching what to do to save money on those fees and stuff like that. And, and then that's when I sort of like discover like FinTech and all these really cool companies doing a lot of amazing changes around the world for people who are traveling a lot or, or that move around a lot. Like sometimes they say six months here, sometimes six months there. And the, right now, you know, everybody's moving around. Um, so I thought, oh, you know, it'd be really cool to work on something like that. And then somehow... Uh, I randomly bought Bitcoin in an ATM because I saw a documentary about Bitcoin and then I was like, I have to get into this. And then um, when they were look when they were looking for a product designer at this company, blockchain, I was like, oh my God, this is where I have my money, like my Bitcoin, so I have to work for them. And so, yeah, that's sort of the, the journey. <laughs> yeah. So we did get a question from Karen. Um, what do you think the most important skill set is to have as a product designer? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, solving problems. Uh, you have to be, I don't know if you could see this as a skill set. I don't know if the question is more like, like a hard skill, but it, the tools don't, doesn't matter at all. Uh, every company uses different tools like that, that I wouldn't worry about that. Um, I think, I think when, I was in my, in like all the interviews I've had, um, 
they really, really kind of like ask you uh, specific questions to understand how you would solve something. It's, it's kind of like um, just figuring out different paths to solve something and, and, and basically something that ends up being easy to see or to interact with, uh, that you're not making complicated things and that, for instance, sometimes the solution is something so simple and ridiculously simple, but you're okay with that. You know, I think you, you shouldn't complicate things. I, I mean, maybe that's like a weird answer to that question, but... No, I don't, I don't honestly, think it was. Yeah. It, it, it's, um, you actually, you know, I think you do define it properly here. And it's, um, I'm going to move on to another question, though, too, because we have limited time and I want to make sure we take advantage of this. So it's the, are you able to use most of your skills gained so far in the present job? And what does typical workday look like for you in this remote world we are in right now? Yeah, so um, so, yeah, so I, I use most of my skills, yes. Uh, I would say that product design is one of those worlds where you have to know a little bit of everything. You have to... Um, you know, I do motion graphics to uh, prototype interactions, for example, for example. And so that's, it's cool that in a way I end up doing animation like that. Um, so I do use most of the skills. I would say perhaps the one that you use the most is UI design, um, just like getting into create interfaces. And a day in the life, I guess, is, um, um, Ooh, is, every day is really different, to be honest. I would say most days have a lot of meetings, um, especially because everybody's remotely. So, you know, in Slack and or like if you use any other chat tool, it's cool, uh, but it's very asynchronous. So sometimes, you know, you would want an immediate answer. You know, you, you're like, you're super inspired and you just want someone else to bounce ideas. So you would end up having a bunch of meeting, virtual meetings a lot, like with many people or with one person, even sometimes it's just five minutes, sometimes it's a whole hour and a half. Uh, I would say like half of the day is meetings like that. And then the other half is just having a coffee or a tea with a lot of caffeine so that I can do, feel inspired and do work. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Actually, so you, you'd mentioned, so how did the recruiter reach out to you? Was it a LinkedIn question? Was it a just random email? Like how did the, the connection um, with Apple happen? Like, It was an email. And um, uh, at first I actually thought it was a, a, a spam email. I don't know. I didn't believe it was because it was in, in one of my emails that I, I was kind of delete because I like, I don't even use this email. And uh, the recruiter eventually, after chatting and everything with him, he said that he found my portfolio online. Um, so yeah. definitely get your portfolio out there. <laughs> this was a leading question for everyone else on the call because I really wanted to get that because what I was trying to say about your answer to being a product manager, like the problem solving element in your portfolio when you can actually present what you do, speaking to how you've met challenges and like it's, your, your portfolio is important. It can actually get you exposure and, and help you land gigs and apply to companies all over the world. So your portfolio is important. You're going to hear different things from different people. I subscribe to the school of thought that it's important. It's a tool, yeah. not the only tool, but it's a great tool for getting your story out there. So yeah, I suppose it depends on the roles you're looking for as well. I mean, if you're a product, I mean, you know, producer, if you're going for a producer role, it the interview per, in person is going to be definitely the key, right? And and all the questions they ask you there, maybe a portfolio is not as important, but if you're going into design and maybe, I mean, I've seen a lot of developers having portfolios and prototypes and links, you know, even if it's private links to somewhere, I think it, yeah, it's super, super good to have it. Yeah. It's a loose term too, because a portfolio can be anything. It can be pointing to sites where you've been contributing to other things, you know, your LinkedIn profiles and other things, but really the yeah. tools that will get you those interviews that will land you the job. The portfolio is never the thing that, Oh, I guess it could, but, you know, get you the gig right on, you know, sight unseen, but you have to get, you know, interview. And I think having some of those life stories, the life experiences that you've been able to have, like, you know, all of that aids in your interview, like the confidence after doing the venture internship in your interviewing process. Right. And, and was it Joe yeah. Bonar from Roadhouse? that was Yes. Yeah. So just for yeah. others on the call. So Joe is now, he's the um, principal at Truly Social Games, which is actually right. in the building right next door to this building. Um, oh. Oh, cool. so, yeah, yeah, that's cool. I thought it, I thought it was. I was just reminiscing there. So Joe, yeah, I always remember Joe for that yeah. <laughs> for that question. Yeah. 
Well, Joe's a great guy and he's hiring, he's still yeah. hiring lots of MDM um, grads, interns, alum, you know, so it's pretty cool. Nice. Does anyone else have a question for Betsina? Because I know, again, I, on the faculty side, I promise that I have to have this wrapped at least five minutes or so before the class so you that need a breather can have it. But I'm monopolizing a lot of time. I hadn't seen you in a while, Betsina, so I wanted to, you know, get yeah, some questions. Yeah, it's very nice to see you. There. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, Josh is even saying CDM can host your site. This is some other tips for the students. Um, any last questions, anyone? This might be a going, going once, going twice. There we go. It's looking good. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to say thank you, Betsina. Amazing. I owe you many things. Once we get back to real life, we'll, you know, I'll make sure that we have proper thank yous and mm -hmm. whether it's an extra beer ticket or some swag <laughs> that I can get from the CDM. Yes. <laughs> we'll get I you there. The <laughs> it's so appreciated. Anyway, this is, uh, yeah. you know, can't thank you enough. I mean, giving back this way is way better than any other alumni gift or things that people, you know, the usual things universities might ask for people. I like asking for your time. So this is, uh, this is very much appreciated. Thank you very much.